guest star is Jessica Walter. And I'm here to tell you that for all your electrical needs, you're okay with Toke. You're wondering how an electrician's son could electrocute himself. Uh, you like the car, huh? Oh, it's a car. I thought it was a rolling monument to bad taste. Listen, love, you're obviously new in town. Are you accusing me of murder? When Texas was young, she lived by the gun. Her heroes are buried in the sand. And deep in my soul, wherever I go, I know who I am. I know where I stay. Whispering in the wind, and the wheels begin to spin. Ooh, it's just a matter of time. And I'm gone again. I'm gone Let him come in. What kind of game are you playing with me? Twelve hours before press time? I come up here to check on the final layouts of the feature you're supposed to publish, and they tell me you pulled it? If I show Caroline Harrington my little photo fest of you and her husband, she's going to flush you right out of this magazine. Really now, Kyle, do you think I'm going to let you blackmail me into running coverage of every hideous house you ever do? Not every house, just the first. My designs speak for themselves. I'm going to be the hottest designer in this country once people see my work. If you run this one feature, I will give you back every print and every negative. Right. You come here, try to blackmail me, and then you expect me to trust you. If I'm going to break down every standard I've ever set here, I'm going to need a little proof. What's this for? From Buck and Caroline. They give one to every designer whose work appears in the magazine. When you bring me the damaging pictures you claim to have on me, you can stick them in there. Get your feature. I really didn't have to be this way. If you would have just paid attention to my work and given me a fair chance. Spare me your graciousness, Kyle. You'd better speak to my secretary about your reservation for this month's reception. Kyle Tokay. Yes, sir. I just want you to know how honored I am to be here. That's great. That's great. great. Thanks. Oh, Bucky, you're not leaving. We've still got to go over the yeah, final. Bryn can do all that. No, Buck, I really think that we... Listen, can, can we talk later? I've got a crew waiting in the track. Hey, thanks for the briefcase. All right, Kyle. Can you meet me at your house in one hour? I've got to have a living room re-photographed. 
re-photographed. The magazine goes to press tonight. I'll come up with a new angle that mutes the mauve and misses the sofa, and we'll have just enough time to make the print run. I'll start to work on the house, and you come by in an hour. Okay. Photographer's running behind, but he's on his way. That will shoot from there, facing the windows. I think we can get a decent picture. In fact, a very decent picture. Pour me some champagne. Why is it every time the hometown paper comes, you get lost in the obituary column? The well, hometown paper's a good way to keep up with the old friends. <laughs> the obituary column lets you know which one of your old friends ain't getting any older. Hey, here, though, here's something strange. What's that? Uh, well, this kid here, he was from over there in Alvarado. Leroy Kyle Toke, native of Alvarado, Texas. 
died yesterday in a tragic home accident in Chicago. Says he went up to Chicago there to pursue a promising career in interior design. Says he survived by his parents, Alma and Esco Toke. Toke? Toke, you remember him, the electrician used to do those commercials. He used to say, uh, just call us day or night, never be dull, never be bright. You're, You're okay, okay with, with Toke. Okay. You got it. Right. He electrocuted himself while putting pennies in a fuse box. Wait a minute, J.J. I admit it's horrible for Leroy or Kyle or whatever his name was to get killed like that. But people die in home accidents every day. Sure they do, huh? I wouldn't even think about it if he wasn't the son of an electrician. But he has to know his way around a fuse box. And if he doesn't, can you imagine how his dad, the electrician, feels? House got a short? Don't fume and snort. Call Toke Electric. It'll be like it ought. <laughs> Howdy, neighbors. I'm Esco Toke. And I'm here to tell you that for all your electrical needs, you're okay with Toke. My wife tells me you lost a son. I guess you know about grieving, too. Yeah. Funny thing, all last night I thought I was crying for Leroy. And about <clears throat> dawn, I got confused. I realized I was grieving for the part of me that died when he did. Yeah, you go along, you grieve for a long time. Then one day you find yourself starting to smile, almost laughing. You feel like you betrayed somebody. Do you have many of the facts on how Leroy died? You're wondering how an electrician's son could electrocute himself. I know you've had a lot of things to do. You've been busy. I wouldn't want you blaming yourself for anything. You mean I didn't take time to show Leroy my business? No, sir. Giving a boy work's part of giving him love. I know Leroy had his own world, but he paid good attention to everything I showed him. Putting panties in a fuse box, poking at him with a knife. The Leroy I knew'd never do a thing like that. I'm sorry, I don't mean to be going on about my problems. It's just I'm running kind of low voltage. Well, I, uh... Wish I could invite you to the funeral, but there ain't gonna be one. Leroy wanted to be cremated, and I gotta go up to Chicago and pick up the ashes. Chicago? You know, I got a couple of investments up there. I was just on my way up there to check on them. Since I'm going anyway, I want to ride up together. What kind of business you say you was in, J.J.? Uh, little everything. Started out ranching. Oh, uh, drilling? Working the rigs? Yeah, did that, too. Oh, that explains it. Explains what? Why you ain't farther along. Now, don't get me wrong, but every day I'm rubbing shoulders with these young lions, you know. <laughs> Believe me, they ain't driving around in 20-year-old Lincolns. They get a new car every other year. They own a house. They own a boat. And <laughs> shit. A lot of them ain't one bit brighter than you. Well, appreciate that. Well, I mean it sincerely. See, the problem is, being in all those things, you got yourself spread too thin. You gotta find one thing you love to do. A lot of men ain't quite connected to the positive pole. No, I'm sorry. I, I don't mean anybody else should compare their success to mine. Yeah, yeah that's... Find out, though, the older I get, that uh, happiness is not uh, getting what you want, but wanting what you get. I wish I could have passed that on to Leroy. I'm afraid he'd come up here trying to match his achievements to mine. <laughs> I told him, you know, up there in the city, they may not want to listen to a country boy. He said he'd make them pay attention. It just started to happen, too. He called his mama and told her his house was going to be in that there Splendor magazine. Well, that's good. If he owned it, boy, that sure would make her worth a lot more money. That's what I said to Elma. She said it wasn't the money that excited him, it was the future. That was the day he died. to find out is we know there's plenty of folks can say no and only one can say yes. I want to know who has a final decision on what goes into this magazine. In other words, who's got yes in the hip pocket? Well, that would be Bryn Colton, sir. Well, then that's the one I want to see. I'm afraid she doesn't set up unsolicited appointments. 
I'd try to work you in with someone else, but our whole staff is at the reception. The reception, huh? Yes, sir, but it's strictly for staff and the designers whose work is in the new issue. I'm afraid I'm not one of those people with the power to say yes. Well, that's all right. Sometimes when all a person can say is no, it's better not to ask them. Much obliged, man. Uh, sir. Hello. It's not that much money. Four thousand dollars for a set of tires. They're racing. They're racing tires. Four thousand dollars is cheap. What are you doing going through my checkbook anyway? I'm a bookkeeper now, remember? Oh, so now you get to execute me every time I spend a dime. Look, we have a budget, Buck, but it is for publishing, not racing tires. If you... Come on, lovebirds, let's save our quarrel for the nest now, shall we? Brynn, I don't need guidance from you on my marriage, thank you. Right, Brynn, she's not wild about anyone trying to improve her marriage or her daddy's magazine. Check out that coat. Do you think they make it in puce? Don't be a twit. I think he's that new designer, the Western Primitive. Ghastly, isn't it? You mean Leroy? His real name was Leroy? Oh, that is too much. <laughs> he always called himself Kyle. The picture was Caroline's idea. Bryn would never have allowed it. But she was afraid Kyle's ghost might show up in a mauve sheet. Mm. Caroline. The founder's daughter. But Bryn has shuffled her off into bookkeeping. Bryn would be the editor-in-chief, I suppose. Listen, love, you're obviously new in town, so let me save you some time. Nobody makes it into splendor unless they prostrate themselves before Bryn Colton's throne. And she makes Evita Perron look like Mother Teresa. That's her playing Gitchy Goo with Caroline's husband. <clears throat> Say, partner, you need a drink. You must be one of them designers, huh? No, no, I'm a photographer, Thomas Rampey. Photographer oh. extraordinaire. You friend of Leroy Tokes? No, no, I never knew him. Heard he was a hick who drove a purple pickup truck. I need a fill-up. Miss Colton, there's a man out here to see you. A Mr. J.J. Starbuck. He says he met you. Well, sort of met you at the reception this morning. He says he'd like to purchase some advertising space. J.J. Starbuck here. Pleased to see you again. I wouldn't have said we were exactly acquainted. Oh, well, <laughs> my daddy used to tell me that an acquaintance, well, that's somebody you know well enough to... Borrow some money off of it, you don't know him well enough to loan him any. What was it you were interested in advertising? Telephones. Now, my company makes a rawhide telephone. She sits on a little armadillo claw base and got a horn for a handle. Mr. Starbuck. You put that little part to your ear and talk into the big part. And the name, <laughs> this is what'll get you. Phone on the range. You've got to be joking. Oh. No. <laughs> I'm afraid a cowhorn telephone doesn't fit our normal product profile. Now, I'm going to be the first one to admit I wasn't smart enough to think of Splendor magazine. But see, you're doing a feature article on a young man from our part of the country, Leroy Tokay. We have no plans to run coverage of Mr. Tokay's designs. But you know, he called his mother the day he was killed. Told her that it was going to press that night. Six pages. I'm not responsible for what Kyle Tokay told his mother. No. No, of course you're not. But then even stranger than that, I went out and bought this magazine 
But it couldn't find Kyle's layout article. But it did find page 46 to 52 was missing. That's six pages. Mr. Starbuck, when it comes to armadillo claws, you may be Picasso, but in the field of magazine publishing, you're obviously not an expert. We frequently have gaps because of late advertising changes. This six-page thing is some meaningless coincidence. Now, if you'll excuse me, I really am busy. If you'd like to explore purchasing some ad space, my secretary can make you an appointment with one of our salespeople. Well, I appreciate your help, ma'am. I, uh, I hope my bringing up all this business about Leroy Tokay didn't upset you too much. Just can't get over the boy's death. Mm. The death of anyone we know is always difficult to accept. But electrocution? I'm afraid it's a common accident. If that boy's daddy had an electrical company, he worked in that company. Now, his daddy assured me in a million years he would have never straight wired that fuse box. It just don't make sense. Good day. I think I can do it, J.J. I didn't get up to see any of his houses when he was alive, and I don't feel right about going in and looking around. We'll just take her slow. We'll go together. This must be the living room. Two circuit boxes. What do you mean, two? Yeah, there's another one in there on that wall. By golly, you're right, J.J. I must have been lowering a dry battery if I didn't notice a circuit box. <laughs> yes, sir. This one's got circuit breakers, and they're brand new. He must have been changing over, wiring up one room at a time. And Leroy was doing the work himself. See that right there? That's the Tokay twist. You twist the wire real tight around that terminal before you screw it down. Always told my boys. You make your connections like that, and they'll outlive you. <clears throat> J.J., I got a favor to ask of you. I know somebody's got to decide what ought to stay in the house till it's sold and what ought to be shipped out right away. I can't go upstairs and look at his pictures and uh, his clothes and his... Uh, Coin collection. And all the other things that was precious to him. on the Tokay house? Am I being held accountable for a creative decision? When Buck gave me this job, I understood those choices were my own. All I'm trying to account for, Bryn, are the expenses in preparing a text, captions, paste up, and a layout I mean, for a feature that we didn't even run. That house was last year's color. Well, what color was it when you first decided to run it? Look. It had some interesting features, but the photos Tokay provided were unacceptable. I was sending a photographer out to try and get a decent angle the very night that poor Kyle... Who? What? Who was the photographer? No one has submitted any paperwork on the job. Thomas Rampey. Well, you know how he is with accounting details.
Thomas. What do you want? If I have an employee who doesn't show up at work for two days, I might be reasonably concerned, especially if that employee was far too drunk the last time I saw him. Oh, yes. You've always been very thoughtful about that. The truth is, I need a favor. You know that at the last moment, we decided not to run coverage of Kyle Toke's house. Now Kyle's death makes that decision seem cruel. We've always been anything but cruel, right? You know how people in our business are. If they can, they'll try to start a rumor that Kyle was so distraught it affected his judgment and contributed to his death. I just want you to say, if anyone asks, that we were going to try to re-photograph his house that evening. Because we care so much about people? Do you know why I keep you at Splendor? Because I'm good. Because you're cheap. Oh, you take excellent photographs. But you're drunk and not terribly reliable. No one else would hire you, especially with what I would tell them if you tried to leave. So be a good lad. For the sake of the magazine. Hey, Miss Colton. How you doing? You like my car, huh? Oh, it's a car. I thought it was a rolling monument to bad taste. Oh. What are you doing here? I met that Mr. Rampy over there at your party. Said he was a photographer, and I figured if he was good enough to do the work for your magazine, he might be good enough to do the work for the phone on the range, you know. Well, that is, if you accept us as an advertiser. You know, uh... Ms. Colton, you were telling me about those six pages missing because probably some advertising was canceled. Magazine layout is not a perfect science. Printers skip numbers. Who knows? Well, I called some other magazines and asked them about it, and they told me that advertising pages are always preceded by a letter. In other words, like A25, S42. But if the regular numbers are missing, it's usually because a feature has been eliminated. All right, Mr. Starbuck, if that gap is going to bother you so much, I may as well tell you. I was saving space for a feature on Kyle Tokay's house. The photographs he submitted were not up to our usual standards, so I was even going to try to re-photograph at the last minute. Now, you know, that would explain something else. Those pennies in that fuse box. If he knew a photographer was coming over, he'd be plugging in a lot of lights and blowing fuses out all over the place and being an electrician's son. He knew with those pennies he could make a solid search. Precisely. Yeah. Except for one thing. What thing? He'd started rewiring his house, and he'd just put a heavy-duty circuit breaker panel out there in his garage. Now, he's tying that into the house, but it only had three lines brought in. And he put six pennies in there. Now, why would he do that when he was doing the wiring himself? Am I supposed to explain every single thing he did? Look, Mr. Starbuck, I'm very sorry. Kyle Toke was a strange man, and he wanted to be in Splendor magazine more than anything on Earth. In his last hours, he was confused, emotional, anxious about getting into the magazine. When people feel that way, they make strange mistakes. And I have to live with the question of how I myself might have unwillingly contributed to the state of mind that made him so careless. Excuse me. Yeah, Mr. Rampy, could I talk with you a few moments? Be my guest. Boy, <laughs> you've got plenty of photographic equipment, don't you? Most photographers do. Yeah. Well, listen, uh, Mr. Toke, Kyle's daddy, he asked me if I'd help him clean up uh, Kyle's accounts. And I noticed when I was going through his checkbook, I found a canceled check there for $2,000 made out to cash. So? Well, so, over on the uh, receipt side, put in there, T. Rampy. Kind of like he was making a notice to who he gave the cash to, you know? 
Didn't think much about it at first until I remembered at the party you said you'd never even met Kyle Toke. A check stub could mean anything. I mean, uh, the guy could have been paranoid about getting his income taxes audited, and he got a list of people who worked at the magazine, put my name in there because uh, of a business expense. That sort of thing happens all the time in the big city. Yeah, I guess so. some folks don't uh, consider cheating the government even cheating. Well, I want to thank you. Thank you for your help. Look at there. <laughs> no, ain't that a dandy? Yeah, that's a, that's a good-sized lens right there, even for a Texas house, isn't it? That is a big lens. I bet an old boy could sit on his front porch in Dallas and see a couple of flies kissing over there in Fort Worth. Say, listen, partner. I photograph other things. Things other than houses, Mr. Rappy? Much black. Bryn Colton's office. It's Thomas Ramsey. Okay, listen, you tell her to call me the minute she gets in. The minute she gets in. Thank you. I'll never let you get away with this. You think you can threaten me? You think this baby's yours? The father of my child is your brother. <gasps> oh, I beg pardon, sir. Didn't mean to start you, ma'am. Uh, that's right. The same brother you had put in prison for killing your mother. But she isn't dead. Oh, she's a right old tart, that one Shut is, sir. Bitch. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Mrs. B. My friends call me Phoebe, but I'm always pleased to have me clients call me Mrs. Ah, Phoebe B. <laughs> oh, I know, sir. Gives some folks a bit of a tickle. Oh, let myself in, sir. Mr. Toke always lets me, bless his soul. I work afternoons across the street. When I saw you coming in and out, I thought maybe I might still be needed, you know. Give the place a proper clean. Oh, this is it, sir. This is where he finds out. And now, Jonathan, absolutely. Oh, oh, what? His son, is that a mystery? That was a tape? Well, I'm always working across the street when the shadow's edge is on, so Mr. Choke, he always set the tape machine for me so I could watch it at my lunch hour, after I finished cleaning for him. What time? Oh, uh, from two to half past two. It would record an old week's worth of episodes. Providing the electricity didn't go off. supposed to be here an hour ago. I have 20 emergencies a day. I can't be expected to reschedule them all because of your little crisis. Now, what is so important? I'm the one who took the pictures. What pictures? Come on, Bryn. If you don't know what pictures, why did you suggest we meet in a place like this, huh? Oh, you're a real piece of work all covered up in hat and sunglasses. You're the one who made this meeting sound so clandestine. I assume you wanted to keep it private. Now, what pictures do you mean? The ones of you and Buck Harrington. Kyle Toke hired me to take pictures of you and Mr. Harrington during one of your corporate conferences in the motel. You're telling me he didn't show you those pictures? If he had, would I have canceled the feature on his design? He died. Accidentally, in a locked house. Are you accusing me of murder? I just want away. That old cowboy keeps on asking questions. Now, if he finds those pictures, wherever Kyle hid them, that'll tie me into a blackmail plot. Now, whatever career I have left, we'll just go up and smoke. Get to the point. $30,000, that's all I want, $30,000. Then I'll just 
take a long trip. I'll start a new career. I'll leave the country. And of course, you'll never come back. And you promise to destroy the extra set of prints you've got hidden somewhere in your files. Go home, get the pictures. Bring them to me. I'll give you the money. stations we bought out there in the Midwest. Do you know if any of them running a soap opera called The Shadow's Edge? Yeah. Could you call them? I need to know about an episode that took place on the day this Toke boy was killed. The Shadow's Edge? The police are telling Toke's daddy that he died at 2.34. And they know that because the digital clocks were interrupted when he took that joke from the fuse box. But his video recorder. Well, now, that went off between 2 and 2.30. So I need to know the exact timing from that station. From the time that Alexandra opens the door. Yeah. Yeah, I got it. I got it. I'm glad you decided to meet me, Mr. Starbuck. As I said earlier, I think we got off on the wrong foot. Well... My daddy used to say that when two people get off on the wrong foot, it's usually because they're dancing to two different songs. How quaint. You know, when I discovered who you were, I realized that you do have the resources to back your ideas, however whimsical they may be. So, I've decided to accept your advertising in our magazine. If you'll send me your phone on the range, I'll personally oversee the creation of an ad that meets with your approval and ours. You may also be interested in knowing that Caroline has suggested that we reconsider running coverage on Kyle Toke's house. We can't promise anything, of course, but if the house does appear, it would be of major financial benefit to his family. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure it would. I thought knowing all this would make your return home more pleasant. Miss Colton? Uh huh. I'm Detective Arnold. I'm sorry to inform you that one of your employees, Thomas Rampy, has died in a fire in his home. How oh. awful. Well, it seems to have been an accident. Chemicals caught fire in his dark room. He was always a very careless smoker. He sometimes dropped hot ashes on valuable negatives. We warned him over and over again. Yeah, well, in cases like this, we like to interview the co-workers just as quickly as possible. If what you're really doing, detective, is asking me for my whereabouts. She's been here with me for the last hour and a half. You ever hunt any wild turkey? The bird or the booze? <laughs> the bird. Yeah, he's the craftiest animal there, except a human being. Yeah, if you don't bird ever know you're out there in the field hunting, you won't see one feather. Now you, yeah, you look like you got the eyes of a turkey hunter to me. Is that right? You know, it's interesting you come to see me, Mr. Starbuck. Rampy's next door neighbor says he had visitors yesterday morning. And you fit the description of one of them. I'll bet I do. I'll bet the other was a woman, too. And I'll bet you, if you checked his phone records, and I'm sure you have, you're gonna find out he made a call to that same woman right after I left. 
And I bet you want to know something about Kyle Tokay, aren't you? Mr. Starbuck, if you know something about all this... Well, I know that Kyle Tokay wasn't killed at that fuse box, but so do you. I can also show you about a 12-minute lapse of time between the time we thought he died and when he actually died. Would you be interested in helping me? Mr. Starbuck. Come to bid us adieu. Well, yes, ma'am. I am leaving tomorrow, all right. But I come up here to see if you and Mr. and Mrs. Harrington can go to dinner with me. That's really not necessary. Oh, I know that. But, I mean, the way I figured, you're not going to get out in San Antonio for a long time. And I'd like to introduce a little Texas hospitality to you up here. So he says, well, really, Bryn, you know the designer's prayer. Lord, give those with taste money, and those with money taste. <laughs> well, and you fired him? Well, of course I fired him, darling. He was the best junior editor we ever had, but we can't allow insightfulness from the hired help now, can we? <laughs> mm. Mr. Starbuck, aren't you enjoying yourself? You've hardly said a word all evening. Bryn, after all, it was only yesterday that... <gasps> ah, yes. Thomas Rampey. Well, it is sad, but living well is the best revenge. Is that something your daddy said, Mr. Starbuck? <laughs> no. No, my daddy never talked much about revenge. And I'm ashamed to say that I haven't thought very much about Mr. Rampey. Oh, then it's Kyle Tokay. Bryn. The man can't believe anyone from Texas could be so stupid as to kill himself. The fact is, I'm amazed they don't do away with themselves constantly tripping over all those cow pies. <laughs> I'm afraid I don't quite approve of your taste, Bryn. I think this past week is maybe... Made everyone a little edgy. Yeah, I certainly hope that I haven't put an undue strain on anyone. But you know, it's not very easy going through someone's personal effects after they've passed away. If you find out so many little things you never knew, like Kyle's daddy was telling me about his coin collection, that he never would put any of the coins in the album until he had that particular series all collected. He just kept them in a little dish sitting right on top of the album. How compulsive. Yeah, you could tell how particular he was from his house. I guess he just felt he couldn't do anything until it was perfect. Which reminds me, I've got to go out there and pick up those pennies. Which pennies? The ones in the fuse box. They might be part of his collection, in which case it'd be valuable, and I want to give them to his daddy. Well, I mean, isn't it a bit odd that he would put valuable coins in a fuse box? He wouldn't put valuable coins in there. But somebody else would, if they didn't know. And that's what I want to find out first thing in the morning. Now, speaking of morning, I've got a long drive to Texas tomorrow. So I think if you all are ready, I'm going to call old Pierre over here and settle up, and we'll uh, head him up and move him out, so to speak. Pierre! Now, I've got a terrible headache. Good night, Mr. Starbuck. Thank you, Caroline, dear. Good night. I'll get your cab. I don't know about tonight, friend. I don't either. This headache is real. Shall we go? Uh, no, no, I, uh, I'll wait for Buck here. Have a good trip. Thank you. What are you looking at? You know, every time a fellow's got some feelings he's not too proud of, about the first thing that comes out of his mouth. That's what are you looking at? <laughs> you old guys really kill me. You've probably been in every cat house from here to California. Now that you're worn out, you look down your nose at a guy who can still make the trip. <laughs> now, I'm sorry to say, ever since I first met you, I've been wanting to do that. Well, your wife's over there crying her eyes out. Mine's under six feet at Texas. And I'd walk through hell just to tell her one more time how much I love her. <laughs> You have the right.
right to remain silent. If you should give up that right, then anything you say may be held against you. This doesn't prove anything. I know my rights. Then why would you come out here in the middle of the night? If Leroy Toke were dumb enough to put pennies in that fuse box, he certainly wouldn't use rare coins. And you're the only one that knew about the pennies in the dish upstairs. You must tell me. Why would you get so involved in the death of a decorator in a mauve suit? Because the way I look at it, death is like a leap into eternity. Any time you're taking a trip that long, I just don't believe anybody's got the right to rush you into it. He thought he could make me feature this house in last year's color. Well, I sure hope you like prison gray. It looks like that's going to be next year's color for you. As soon as we get over Texas, I'm going to have the pilot fly low enough so I can open a window and scatter these ashes in the sky. See, Leroy's not in here. He's in here. Say, J.J., you still got any stock tied up in that Markley outfit? Dump it. That bunch is burning them filament. No. Limousine, private airplane, just because you got a little stock and you asked for it? They treat all their proxy holders that way. They're going to belly up. The airport through their mind. Private jets waiting. ways of going on. In the fullness of time, victories can become defeats. Tears can become joy, like an old preacher once told me. We have our good days and our bad days. We never really know at the time which is which. Higgins and a woman are kidnapped on Magnum P.I. Monday at 4. Now stay tuned as Bob Pizer and Deborah Silberstein bring you up to date on the new sports and weather. Then guest host Robin Williams welcomes singer-songwriter James Taylor to Saturday Night Live. It's coming up here on Channel 4.